Hello everyone, how's it going? So today we are going to look into face detection using OpenCV on the web. So this is also a, going to be a tutorial on running a Python server on your browser, at the same time trying to run OpenCV applications. So the idea of this program is to have start with a beginner program so we can see how we can integrate OpenCV with the browser using Python, but at the same time lay the foundation for ourselves to build up more complex systems like machine learning on the web so we can create some models that we can run on a browser or maybe on, on an API or ultimately on a phone, cell phone as well. So that's, that's where I'm trying to go. And if it's something that is interesting you and if it's something you want to join along, consider subscribing and join along with our journey. So let's see how we can build this. So coming down to my folder here, I have two files. One is called main.py. Right now it's an empty file. You can see that it has zero bytes in it. And we'll try to see how we can code this. The second is the har cascades. And this is the machine learning or the Viola Jones library that is going to help us with face detection. It's a very simple application. And I'll show you how we can integrate that. We have tons of videos on this. It's a very old algorithm. But uh, we are using this library to do our face detection. Now let's come back uh, onto this main.py file and it's, it's called main because it's the main guy which runs the whole server and there are, uh, they're going to be having a, a few more files that we will use right now but main.py is what runs everything so that, that's why I want to bring your attention to this. Now let's come back to our test, uh, our text editor which is the sublime right here and we have main.py opened up. Let's start with how, what we can do. The first thing we want to do is import Flask. Flask is a microservices frame, framework, which is, uh, if you might have heard about Django, Django is more popular these days. And Flask is like a, like a, almost like a sibling to Django. It, it has its own pros and cons, and Django has its own pros and cons, but we are going to be using Flask for this application. So, Let's see how we can integrate. So first thing you want to do is from flask, import flask and render template and also render a response. So these are three variables that we need. One is a flask and this is the main server. So render template is going to help us rendering HTML templates and I'll show you how we can use that. Response is sending a response to the web server or to the client which is your browser so you can, from your python application you can send a response to your chrome or firefox browser so we'll see how we can do that now how do you get hold of flask now you can open up your command prompt or whichever id you're using if uh, if you're using vs code you should be able to install it on your bra on your software itself if not you can open up command prompt and do pip install flask so that's that's all you need to do and it'll take care of installing flask for you i already have it installed here and you can always see my pip freeze so you can see what all are the softwares that i have installed right here it'll take a few seconds i'm running on a virtual environment which is right here called flask and for some reason it's taking a quite a bit of time to open up all my pip applications okay it has come up here so it's pip so you can see flask it's a capital f f l s s k uh, sorry f l a s k this is what happens when you wake up early in the morning to make videos okay you know you can't speak now you're only going to be installing flask and you're going to be installing opencv contrib python so these are the two things that we need for this application everything else that, that you see here like the click the markup save the numpy jinja everything that comes automatically when you install flask and opencv contrib python so let's clear that let's come back to our python file so we have this we are importing flask right now and we'll try to render a simple template simple flask template let's see how we can do so when you have when you're using flask the first thing you want to do is initialize flask and we'll call it as an uh, app an app that flask is going to run for us and we will say that the flask name 
is going to be app and this is the way you initialize the flask so you say that you're initializing or the main guy the main.py file is going to run that app for us so that's the notation of how you can initialize a flask app now what does flask do so it flask is nothing but a web server so if you go to a website or if you go to uh, a web address like www dot something it the moment you click on that it calls a web page and that web page is something that will be rendered by flask so flask will run the back end of your server and whatever you call on that website flask will come back and render the template for you so for that purpose let's make the home page of your website and you can do that by calling this so app dot route with a slash and inside the call inside the columns so you're saying that this is the home page this is the index page so whenever you go to the browser it's called the index page if i were to write down about here so it'll open the about page when you whenever you go to the about page it will render that if i were to say contact us so if i go to the contact us page this is what it will run but when we say nothing we just put the slash then it means that it's it's you're telling the flask to open up the main home page which is nothing but the index so we'll call a function called diff index and the purpose of this function is to render or give us that template or give us that uh, browser so we'll say return and we will try to render or print or we'll say return hello hello world so let's do that and let's run this thing now before you close the application you do want to let flask know what port address you're going to be initializing it so for that purpose let's initialize the port address now what is a port address so you, every every website has its own address and since this server is running on your computer you need to let your website know what's the address of your website where where your website is housing on your computer so you just need to let the application know where, what is your ip address or what is your port address and you can say that by telling that if name is equal to main so you it's nothing but telling that it's that's the main file and that's where the app is located you need to run app dot run and the host address which is the host Will, will be present at 0, dot 0, dot 0, and another 0. So that's nothing but the local host, local host, which is the main basic web server on your computer. And you're also going to be initializing a port address. And this is something which you can have of your choice, you know, 5,000, 9,000, 5,700, 800, anything. But there are certain port addresses that are used by the computer which are not allowed for uh, our use so just make sure you're not using one of those and it's not too difficult you, if if you see an error it will pop up an error telling you that this port is already being in use so just go back and change to some other value some other random value and it will open back again but 5000 will safely run in any computer the next thing i'm going to tell is i'm going to tell the application that the debug this is going to be in debug mode and it's going to be true and the reason i say debug mode is because uh, this is right now in construction and if i make any mistakes i should be able to go back and then refresh the browser so i don't need to close the server and reopen it back again debug helps a lot when you're especially trying to make when you're when you're when you're prone to making a lot of mistakes so that's it let's come back and save this and we're going to be opening our command prompt now and let's try to run python main.py so you can see the moment i ran main.py it's saying that there is a server running on so and so address and we can always copy this address or you can open up your main on your browser and let's come back to your browser and let's say localhost colon 5000 
So it's opening up a browser and it's trying to load something for us. And definitely there is, it's giving some sort of a get. And you can see that it's running from, if I go back to the command prompt, it's, it shows that it's so-and-so time somebody tried to access and they're getting a code response of 200. So, and you can see that if, if I go back to the browser, it has printed hello world. And if I were to go back to the prompt and if I changed this to from hello world to hello YouTube and I resave it and I go back, since it's in debug mode, we don't need to rerun this. I just can simply go back to the browser and press refresh and you can see it's now changed to hello YouTube. So that's the power of debug where you can change your code in the middle of its running execution and then it can of course render re-render the file for us. So this is good now it's able to run it's able to print what we require what we needed and it's able to run and return this file for us. Now let's try to render a HTML page and that is something which is interesting. So instead of having this hello world we are going to let the application know that you are going to render a template and we'll call this template right now we'll call it as index.html so we'll create an html file now and we are telling flask that you need to render this template called index.html so let's go back to our folder and in order to create templates you first need to create a folder called templates and this is going to be, this is supposed to be a default folder and here you create a document called index.html so let's open that in sublime again so we have this empty file so what we did was we just created a html index.html file and it's going to be a simple html file with the html tag and let's close this tag before we forget. And then we are going to have a head tag. And we are also going to have a title tag. Let's call it as a title for the brow for the page. And we will call it as face detector. So we have the face detector title. Once we have this, then let's create the body of the, or let's create it after the head. And let's create a body of the template and we will call we'll let's create a h header and we'll call it the h1 tag and we'll call face detection using open CV so let's do that and let's close this tag the h1 tag and let's close the body tag as well so we are done with this okay so we have a simple html tag which has a title of face detector and a head header file showing that it's face detection using opencv so let's do that let's save this let's come back to our main.py file uh, we are calling the index.html file which we just created and let's save this let's go back to our command prompt it has rerun itself we can simply open up our browser and refresh and you can now see that it's able to create this face detection using OpenCV and there's a title which is now says face detector. So we can now say that the Flask server is working very nicely and it's able to render the templates from this thing. However, you see there is a mark here. Let's try to find out where that guy is coming from. It's probably from one of the tags that we did not close properly and it is right here because of the body tag and because of the h1 tag so it looks fine to me i don't know where it's getting that h1 tag from but nevertheless it's not something which is going oh you know what it's because of this guy because we have two tags on h on the header so that should take care of it let's save this and let's go back to our browser and yes we fixed it so that's good so now we know how we are rendering the template coming back to our main.py file so the main.py file right now is doing nothing but just simply rendering a html file 
Now the next step is to create a camera variable and read a camera and then generate that image for us. So let's, for that purpose, we'll create another file, another file which is going to be helping us with reading the camera frame. Now it's going to make a little, little more complicated from now on just because we have, we're now going to deal with images and sending it to a web browser on a server. So it's going to, it might feel a little complicated, but hang in with me. It's not, it's not very complicated. I'll try to make it as simple as I can. So let's, let's go from there. Now, so stay with me. Now the next file we're going to create is a camera file, a camera dot pi file and let's open this also with the sublime text editor and this text editor this file is nothing but creating the file basically for us to open up a webcam and also display the image on a browser so the purpose of this camera dot pi file is nothing but just to open up your webcam and then read the file for us and supply it to the browser so let's come here and let's import OpenCV, which is OpenCV2. And let's create a class. Let's call it class. Let's make a class. And we'll call this class as video camera. And it's supposed to take an object, which this object could be your webcam, it could be a video file, or it could be anything. So we'll define and we'll define or we'll initialize this class and with this object and we'll call it as self so this is nothing but initializing the self class of the video camera and we'll say that whenever we call the video camera you should immediately initialize the webcam and we can do that by calling the cv2 video capture and you're just telling the program no that whenever you call this fun this class called video camera it should immediately initialize your webcam and once everything is done, once the server is closed, you should also release your webcam. And how you do that is by deleting or you're creating a deleting function. So whenever the application or whenever the server closes, whenever the browser closes, it should release the webcam. Otherwise, what happens is your webcam become tra becomes trapped in this application and you won't be able to use the webcam for any other application on your computer until, until the next restart of the computer. So at this point, we, we just created the initialization and the deletion of the webcam or, or the browser uh, for just taking, just initializing the capture mode and releasing the capture mode. Now, the next function we'll define here is called as getting frames. So we'll, we'll say, we'll call this function called get frame. And this, the purpose of this function is nothing but to just read the frames from the webcam and then send it to the browser. That's all it's gonna do. So we'll call it as, you, we know there is a video read dot command or a capture read dot command. What we're doing here is we're just reading the video from, from the webcam and for that purpose if we were not doing it in a, in a class we could simply say video dot read and it would start reading the webcam images the the images coming out of the webcam and this is by and that's the reason we do video dot read but at the same time you can always put self just because you're, you're using a class variable and whatever comes out of the webcam is now stored in this variable called frame. That's all we are doing. And let's display that onto the browser right now. Let's not do any face detection on it. Let's make it simple for now for our understanding. Once we take the frame, let's return the frame or the image onto the browser. But now before we save it, before we send it, we need to convert that into a JPEG format because the images that are coming out, these are just matrices. These are just numbers of matrices and it's not in a JPEG format, but you know on a browser, all the images that are rendered that are either in JPEG or PNG format. So we need to convert our webcam image or our webcam matrix into a JPEG format. And you do that by using an OpenCV's function called as CV2 IM encode. And this is a function that converts any image or any matrix into a 
encoding format and in our case we're going to say that it's going to be a jpeg format and we'll call it as frame so that jpeg variable here it is going to store that frame variable as format of a jpeg and this ret this ret over here and this ret over here these are nothing but flags success flags that helps us debugging if there was an error in this code it, the red flag would automatically become false but if it worked out perfectly the red flag would become true so if you if you come to a doubt if you have a doubt where oh the program is running properly everything is working perfectly but my camera is not displaying the image so immediately you can come here and print the red flag and see what kind of what kind of a result is the red flag giving so you can do print red and it will print out whatever the red is giving so if you see a true then it means the reading is good you have to look into some other problems but if it's false then you immediately know that there is some issue in reading the images from the webcam similarly is the case for this red flag once we have the jpeg we can simply return this as bytes so this is a function called two bytes so you're just converting you're just sending the jpeg as bytes in the byte format to your browser that's all we are doing here so let's save this so we have a camera.py file and we are just reading the air from the im encode and we are reading it from the video we are converting it into a jpeg format and then we're just sending it as bytes to the image to the browser now let's come back to the main let's try to see how we can take that information from the camera.py file and then use it for our in order to render it on the browser uh, the, now since we created that camera.py file let's initialize let's uh, create let's call that class so you can say from the camera.py file that we created right here import the class that we created and the class name is video camera so this video camera object or the class that we created, we are just calling it, we are initializing that in the main file. So that's that's what we are doing. Now the next step is to create another route. And we this route is what is going to be responsible for taking the information from the camera. So we'll call it as at app.route and we'll call it as a separate variable we'll call it as video feed and this this browse this particular place is responsible just to take the video feed from the camera and we'll call a function called video feed code the, with the brackets and we come back and we press colon come back here now this is going to be a little complicated and uh, you don't need to worry about so much of this right now let's come back here and we say return response response that is the response that we're using from here from the flask we are just telling the browser that there is going to be a response for you and that response is coming from the camera and we're going to say generate video camera function so we are we're now initializing the video camera class right here so what will happen immediately your webcam will be initialized so we are just creating generate or we are calling the gen, generate video camera now this is going to be a function which we are now going to call and let's pause this here right now so let's open up this function this new function and we'll call it as def gen generate a camera so the, in our case we are calling the video camera right here and once we do that so whenever it's true, whenever it's so it's an infinite loop, it's continuously going to read the images from the video camera object and then supply it to you. So we are saying video camera true frame equal to camera dot get frame. This is the same function that we initialized in the camera.py file, the get frame. So we are just creating, we're creating an infinite loop and then we are calling the camera, camera object, which is nothing but this video camera and we're telling video camera dot get frame. So that will initialize the camera and start reading the get frame for us. And once this is created, once we have 
the frame variable this frame is nothing but the image we want to send this frame back to our video feed so we can do that by creating a yield function and this is part of the flask variable right now you don't need to worry too much about it it's just to help us understand how we're doing it so we have this and we this is basically creating a uh, application creating a uh, html render template for us and we're saying we're telling that it's going to be a paragraph with a frame and we are just initializing in on a new line in a new paragraph and we are also saying that the, the we are telling what kind of a content it is. We are telling this paragraph or this content type is going to be an image or it's a JPEG image. And you are going to be initializing it on a new paragraph <clears throat> on a new line so that it renders properly. We just creating some new lines on the browser and it will open up nicely for us once we have this then we initialize our frame we just display the frame and we also let's put another line over here let's plus and we also create another paragraph with a few more lines to make it nice and crisp and we have Okay, so we are basically just creating that package, what is going to be displayed on the web browser. So it's that package is going to have some paragraphs, the image, and then some more binding. So you're just creating that uh, representation for us. So once that is done, once uh, this all information is being coded properly, you're just closing the browser, you're closing the, the brackets right here and coming back to your video feed now this type or uh, this particular type you're going to let another uh, the video feed supply this information to the html tag so this html tag is now supposed to be we will we'll modify this html tag in a little bit but in order to send the information to the html because the html is what is ultimately going to display the image for us we are going back to the video camera and letting the html tag know how we want the file to be rendered so the just before we close the bracket we are starting to open up another one and we are you know what before let's go back and just put a comma over there so that we are initializing a new a new argument and this argument is mime type so uh, this is basically explaining what kind of a uh, response the html is going to be receiving and it's going to be a multi-part response because there are quite a bit of things that we are uh, combining along with the image and it's going to display and you are going to replace the bound the boundary or basically what, whatever that area is represented replace the boundary and the boundary name is going to be the frame that we created so that's all we are initializing right now and coming back here. So this, this function, this video feed is taking, is initializing the video camera. It's taking the image coming from the webcam, from, from the video camera, and then sending it to the browser. And we are telling that the browser is going to display this frame and it has this part, this browser has a couple of different other objects along with it. So with that, we have this main.py file created. We just save this. We go back to the index.html file. And now we need to make a small change. We are now going to initialize an image. So we had the header tag. Now we're going to have an image tag because this image is going to come from the, uh, from your basically your browser, from your main.py file. So we're going to initialize. We're going to give this an ID. We're going to call this maybe background bg okay and the source for this image is going to be normally you put down the file name image.jpg if it was a normal html static html but since this is a web server you are going to read that image from your video.html file or video feed the video feed function or route that we created this is where your image is going to come so we're going to represent that and how we do that 
so flask has a very nice way of initializing and we create these curly brackets and inside this curly bracket you are saying the url for video feed that the video feed that you created is going to house my image that is what you're telling in this function here so you're just telling the browser that you're going to be or you're going to be showing an image tag or in an image and the image is going to have the source coming from the url or from the browser or the video feed tag and we just close this image tag we save this we come back to our main.py file and save this as well let's go back to the browser and at this point it should start reading the webcam if we did everything perfectly so it's reading out the image nicely it's able to uh, it's able to do it in real time you can see that i'm talking to you and it's also displaying the webcam right here for us so it's working out now let's try to see how we can do the face detection aspect that's that's a more simple aspect this was the most complicated one where we had to read all the images from the webcam and then display it on the browser so let's uh, come back here let's uh, close the browser right here and at this point when the moment i close the browser my webcam automatically switches off this is because of the delete function that we created on the brow on the main dot uh, on the camera.py file now this is where we are going to do the face detection aspect as well so everything that is happening is happening here so the webcam is going to be read by this function and it's right now it's simply displaying the image but we want to do a little bit more we are more ambitious we want to do a little bit more just to make ourselves make our ego satisfied so we are going to do some face detection now now come back here come down here the next thing we want to do is what do we do for face detection face detection does two steps one you need to convert the image into a grayscale cv2 convert color and you supply the image frame and you use the convert color function and we're telling the function we're telling the uh, camera.py file to convert the image from bgr to gray so you first convert the image into gray and then supply this gray image to our uh, har cascade let's initialize a har cascade and let me copy the file name let me copy the whole file name we're going to call face cascade cv2 cascade classifier and this classifier is called is going to be called as that's the file name that we had right here in the bra in this one this particular one this is what we are using and i will put it in the github repository so just uh, i'm going to copy this file name right here and coming back to our camera.py file let's paste that here so we are just initializing the cascade classifier for ourselves and let's not forget the extension it's going to be an dot xml file so we have this so we have the face let me minimize this a little bit so that you can see what i've done so i've initialized the face cascade using a cascade classifier and this is the file name har cascade frontal face default okay that's good let's go maximize it now come back and now we are going to use that classifier to detect our faces so come back here we are going to be now reading going to be reading from here right let's open the gray and we'll call the face or the faces that are detected the faces because it'll be able to do detect multiple faces so this file is now going to read multiple files multiple images from the webcam and then multiple faces and then draw the rectangle on each face the faces is equal to face cascade the cas face cascade that we initialized here and we are going to do detect multi scale and this is a function of opencv and we're going to say that it's going to initial it's going to read the gray image and this image is possibly of size 1.3 and it's going to probably have five neighbors so these are just parameters these are just filter parameters uh, you can always change it to your liking 
it's nothing fixed you can always change it to yourself now once we have the faces now we want to draw the rectangles so we do that by calling each faces and we can call because the faces this this faces will have information about the x coordinate the y coordinate the width and the height of the each faces and we are just going to loop over all the faces and then simply draw the rectangle and we use the rectangle function and the rectangle function takes four types of parameters one is the image that we are going to be doing where we are going to be drawing and that's the frame and that same frame you're going to supply it to your uh, main.py file as well so we have the frame and then you want to initially uh, give out the information of the top left corner of the uh, of the rectangle the next is the bottom right corner which is x plus w y plus h and this is and the next thing is you're going to be defining the color yes the color of the rectangle which is uh, let's give it a uh, red color which is 255 and let's give a thickness of maybe three to make it more break, bold once uh, this is done once uh, maybe we do one 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 phase for now just to make it simple we just do break and then it'll stop the rendering of all the other faces in our case but if you want to do for multiple faces you can simply keep running this and it'll it'll run properly so not nothing too crazy on that uh, and this reminds me the, the how we're doing face cascade tomorrow we will do smile detection on the face yeah so we'll do smile detection if you if you're interested yes hang around and i'll, I'll create a follow-up video on this so let's do this let's we have we have a safe we go back and the good thing is it's every everything is happening properly but now it looks like there's an error it's saying fear the cascade classifier was not detected and i'm trying to see why it's not giving that so it looks like there was an error and if i go back to our browser and if i try local host it sh it won't run because there seems to be an error now let's try to fix that error and uh, we can see that it's saying that cascade classifier has no attribute module cv2 cv2 does not have a uh, cascade classifier okay let's come back to this one and try to see if we did any kind of a mistake in naming the convention we, we, we are calling it as cascade classifier classy oh yeah the spelling of the classifier so classifier i missed the i over there so let's save this and let's go back to our command prompt let's clear everything and let's try to run the main.py file once again so now it's running properly it seems to be running uh, properly let's go back and let's try to refresh this so it's able to detect uh, it's able to detect my face and it's also able to draw the rectangle on my face so this seems to be working nicely and it's real time it's fast it's able it's very responsive and at the same time it's displaying right now it's on the local host it's running on a local host and on your own computer but if you wanted to uh, deploy this on a uh, global ip where others can also access your webcam or use the services like the face detection you can always do that you can use some applications like the heroku cloud where you can deploy your flask server your python application out there and can run so uh, this it, you saw it was it, it's uh, it had a few steps but at the end it's simple where you're just able to read the webcam and then display the image on the browser for us so well so that's that's what we are trying to about what we wanted to achieve today with that we come to the conclusion again as i said this is just the base the foundation of how we can run OpenCV on a browser and we want to do some more complex applications some more app programs where we can use the power of OpenCV and other machine learning on a browser so we can access this and make some apis where we can access this on the web so that's where i'm trying to go and where i'm trying to learn and grow so if it's something that is helping you if it's something you want to join along consider subscribing we're just getting started we're going to take up more challenging applications in the future with that you guys take care keep learning keep growing stay safe Bye bye